digitaljamsessions.com. Can you tell us who you are and, and what the company is and what you sure. guys do? So my name's James Seeger and uh, I run Les Enfants Terribles Theatre Company. So I produce shows and I direct shows and currently I've uh, co-directed Alice's Adventures Underground, which is at uh, the vaults under the Waterloo Station until the end of August. Um, we also tour lots of shows worldwide in, in theatres as well, uh, as well as uh, interactive, um, immersive, <laughs> we use that word, events. Okay. And why Alex? What was the, the driving decision behind Alex? Well, Ollie, who runs the company with me uh, and I, we'd, we'd seen a lot of immersive or uh, interactive theatre and events and we've loved them and there's some great stuff out there. But for us, we've always felt that there's something missing when we see these events. And like I said, we're, we're a storytelling company, theatre company. All our theatre shows have always been as labelled as such by the press. And so we thought going to uh, immersive theatre, wouldn't it be great to go to something uh, immersive theatre and be immersed, but, but be immersed in the story mm-hmm. so that uh, as an audience you would go and not only look around and say, wow, this isn't this amazing design and isn't this brilliant and the actors are brilliant, but be truly part of a story and involved in a story. And a lot of people do do that. But um, we, you know, we, we felt that, that there was, that was of interest to us. There's no point doing something on this scale of something, uh, an immersive piece of theatre, if we want to use that word, um, without doing something different. And not for different sake, but, but because we wanted to do it. And that's what we wanted to be as an audience, go to something and be involved um, as, as a story, in a story. And so Alice was, was perfect in a way. We, we looked at a lot of stories where we thought, where is a, a book where, or literature, where is there a world that we'd want to visit? So when you read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, for, for us, Ollie and I, it's an amazing story and, and amazing on stage. But really, when you read that, you want to go to the Chocolate Factory. That's what you want to do as a reader. And Alice is the same. And initially, four years ago, we started talking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But Sam Mendes got hold of that. And mm-hmm. so we thought, well, what else, what else is out there that it, there's a truly crazy, wonderful, bizarre world that when you read it, you want to go to it? And uh, someone said, Alice, of course, and, and, and it rolled from there. Alice is an amazing, amazing piece of literature that is still as popular now as when it was written worldwide. And when you do read it, you want to go to Wonderland. And that's yeah. where we started. We want to take our audience to Wonderland and immerse them into a, into a story and into the world. And do you feel that perhaps you've taken a degree of uh, artistic license with the world? Uh, you have to, um, because there are... It's existed for 150 years, and there's been so many interpretations um, on film, even in music, books, you know, and uh, plays. You, you have to have your own spin, but at the same time, you have to honour, and that's something I was quite keen on, because I think there's been loads of versions of Alice in Wonderland, and I think sometimes people try and reinvent the wheel, and yeah. when actually, hopefully we haven't strayed too far away from the source material, and honouring what Carol has created. But at the same time, you do have to do, you have to have your take on it, you have to have your spin, um, but at the same time honour. So it's, 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 an, it's a difficult knife edge of of honouring it and staying true to the book, which is what we wanted to do, mm. but also have your own interpretation. Okay. What I was asking was really about this notion of technology mm-hmm. and augmented reality and kind of artificial means, if, if you like, of really helping to create immersive environments or immersive theatre environments and bring it to life. By using technology. By using technology and the use of technology. And when you have a show like this... yeah. So the question from my perspective is how much would you rely on technology or, or do, what part do you think technology has to play yeah. in what you do? Um, well, there's, there's, there's two lots of technology that we are using in this show. There's one that the audience will see um, and experience directly and then there's one that the audience will never ever experience or, or see or know about. Um, and that, that second one is key to how the show works. It's uh, it's an exceptionally complicated show, and uh, without technology running it, we, we wouldn't be able to do it. So there, there are two lots of technology. Um, the the first one is how the show works. So basically, uh, fifty six audience members go into Wonderland, 
and then uh, they get a decision, eat me or drink me. And uh, depending on their decision, they then get split up into groups of 28 and 28. Then those groups uh, go around Wonderland and they get split up again into groups of 14, depending on their suits. So they get uh, hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades. Uh, and then those groups of 14 go around Wonderland and then they all come back together again um, for the tea party and the court scene. Um, so in, in order to actually do that, uh, all these scenes have to run to an exact time um, because 15 minutes later that happens again. So another 56 people come in 15 minutes later and then another 15 minutes later. So that happens 12 times a night. So basically you have um, 700 people going through Wonderland uh, over a period of, uh, of an evening. So in order to do that, in order so groups don't meet other groups, it's all run on a time code. Uh, so there's a big room in our show, a computer room, where the show is all programmed into into this time code, and essentially you press go, and the whole show will run, whether an audience or actors are there or not. So in in a particular scene, there's subtle lighting bits or sound bits that all show to the audience to the actors that they then have to move on, or that is the end of the scene. So if the audience arrive late or if the actors arrive late, they have to improvise around a certain scene and get it, that scene in and out and the audience out as well because there's another audience coming through afterwards. So from a techno technological point of view, to organise that and to run that has been quite, uh, quite an achievement and quite an undertaking. Um, it's been a lot of work to put all that together. Um, and uh, there are lots of special effects in our show as well, which comes on to the other point of the technology that the audience will see. Yes. Uh, simple things uh, like we've got like special effects of water jets and things like this in the tea party, um, and they're all on a time code as well. So that will happen like once uh, every seven minutes. So the actors have to time their scene around these water jets, for example. Um, other things as well that we have in Wonderland without uh, you know, giving too much away, we have a, a, the Mock Turtles room, which we've actually flooded, and it rains in that room. Um, so you know, from a technological point of view uh, and a design point of view, that's been a combination in terms of, and also sound and lighting, there's, there's a lot gone into that. And finally, we work with um, a girl called Nina Dunn, who is a uh, who's a genius. And she's a, a video projection artist, and she has created lots of um, special effects in Wonderland and projections um, uh, in terms of when how we create the uh, the rabbit hole uh, and also the caterpillar. There's all these video projections, and she she uses these amazing. Uh, projections. Uh, there's like four or five in that particular room, and, and the technology on that is, is pretty advanced. It's something that I don't 100% understand, but working with her and pushing technology and what she's done is, is creates the experience that the audience get involved in. It's amazing what she does. So, we were talking briefly about what you see as the role for technology, and bearing mm -hmm. in mind you have such a complex show. What would you, we, we talked about how do you take the experience away from the show itself and allow that, that experience to continue to live beyond the show, to stay with the audience. How do you see that being something you can facilitate? Well, I think technology has to, has to aid the show and help the show and drive the show, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be the thing that stands out. Mm -hmm for the audience. It, it should be another way to tell the story. And that's really important for us be as a theatre company. We're known um, as a storytelling uh, company. And so everything that we use, whether it's um, puppets or music or technology, and we've used a lot of technology in this in terms of projection or, or like I said, the time code or special effects and raining rooms, everything has to be there for a reason. Um, rather than just in, wow, that's cool, which of course some of these things are, uh, they have to drive the story because otherwise there's no point to it personally. It has to be a point of the story, not the other way around. So it's quite important for the audience to, to see that even subtly or subconsciously, but to understand that there's a reason for it. And I think that's important in any theatre really, or any medium, film as well. Hmm. Now, one of the questions that I ask everybody on the show is what you feel the future is for your industry uh, and, and what you feel the future is in terms of the integration of technology into that industry. Yeah. So what do you see as the, the next significant piece of technology that's coming down the line that you think is going to have significant impact? Mm. Well, I think if you look at technology, audiences are getting more and more involved in films, in video gaming, in theatre. Uh, and that is why there's, I think there's a lot of 
uh, immersive theatre, if you want to use that word, around because audiences are looking for the next experience. And so technology can, can only help with that. In terms of virtual reality, there's a lot of that, but it's, it's interesting how technology is driving that forward in terms of gaming, in terms of film. I mean, you, you only got to look at film as well to see how that's evolved or, or evolving in terms of 3D and, and IMAX and and giving an audience is a different experience because people want a different experience. People want to be closer. People want to be involved in the world a lot more, which is, you know, why 3D and IMAX cinemas and all those are, are so popular because people are looking for that next step and why virtual reality is more important. Um, in terms of theatre, I think, you know, with, with over the last five or six years, there's a lot of, like I said, immersive theatre out there um, and people are taking theatre out of the building, out of the theatre world uh, of theatre building and putting it into environments outdoors or or creating worlds in disused buildings um, and uh, technology can only help with that but I think audiences are pushing theatre makers and filmmakers and music makers to, to be more creative and to think outside the box um, hopefully we're doing something different with um, Alice's Adventures Underground in, in creating a piece of theatre obviously using technology but but something that's that's engaging the audience in a different way than has been done before. And also what logistically and uh, in terms of how we've planned this, nothing has ever been done like this before as well in terms of how we divide the show up and audiences go around and every 15 minutes and on the time code. Mm -hmm. it, and we understand why no one's done that before <laughs> because it's been very complicated and very difficult to achieve and a lot of spreadsheets and a lot of planning to try and give these audi the, an audience uh, a, a very... Uh, personal experience uh, and on this scale it's been very difficult um, but we, you know, there's no point doing something that's been done before mm. and like I said technology can help with that and aid that and push it so it's quite exciting at the moment to see where theatre will go mm. but audiences are you know, looking for more experiences mm. and I think you know, at, at the moment maybe uh, the I word immersive theatre is, is kind of at its peak and I think People are looking for the next thing. People are looking, what is next? What's what different? And hopefully we're, uh, what we're doing is different, um, but not different for different sake. Like, like I said, it, we, we, it, this is the perfect way to tell this story. Well, thank you very much. That's all right. Digitaljamsessions.com.